Dear viewers, welcome to the second part on cultivation of microorganisms under the core course food microbiology. This part will be covered under the following sections, method of enumeration that is qualitative and quantitative, cultivation medium for microorganisms, factors affecting microbial growth. Microbial analysis is useful to assess the safety and quality of food. Effective food control systems are essential to protect the health and safety of consumers. Microbial analysis is needed to maintain the quality of safety, quality of wholesomeness, to know the number of microorganisms relate to product, to assess overall quality, shelf life and safety of food. It is needed during handling practices, processing fermentation and to give a standard specification while maintaining the regulation and to identify presence of spoilage in food. Let us learn about methods of enumeration, qualitative and quantitative. Direct methods. Direct methods of enumeration involve counting the number of microorganisms directly for example by counting the number of colonies on an agar plate or by using a microscope to count the number of cells observed. Direct count of microorganism or DMC using a hemocytometer. A hemocytometer is a counting chamber as shown in figure 1. It is a thick glass slide containing a well in the central section. On the bottom of the well, a grid is etched containing squares of known area. Each square is 0.04 millimeter square. A cover slip is placed over this well forming a chamber of known depth that is 0.1 mm. Thus, the volume of liquid that each square can hold is 0.004 millimeter cube or 0.04 multiplied by 0.1 that is equal to 0.004 millimeter cube. The sample to be counted is placed in the well by placing a drop of the sample at the edge of the cover slip so that it runs into the well and over the grid. The hemocytometer is then viewed using a microscope. The number of microorganisms in several squares is counted and the average number of microorganism is calculated. This number of microorganism is then used to calculate the number of microorganisms in the original sample. Figure 1 depicts the direct microscopic count using the hemocytometer. Let us learn about wet mount method. Wet mount is a method for observing microbial samples under microscope. Here a desired liquid sample is placed on the slide as shown in figure 2. Thereafter a cover slip is placed without forming any air bubbles. The fluid spread out in a thin layer between the cover slip and the slide. The mount is now examined under the microscope at appropriate magnifications for example 10 multiplied by 100 x. This method is commonly used to view microscopic organisms that grow on liquid media especially when studying their movement and behavior. Figure 2 shows the procedure for wet mount method. Let us learn about the dry mounts, microorganisms particularly bacteria being too small need their permanent preparations which is made by drying and fixing them on clean slide without without staining. For preparing a dry mount, a drop of distilled water with a small amount of culture is spread as a thin smear on a clean slide. The smear is allowed to dry and then fixed by passing it through a flame 2 to 3 times with the smeared slide away from the flame. If desired, this dried and fixed culture may be stained and dried again for observation under the microscope. Let us learn about hanging drop mount. It is used to observe the motility or germination or fission of microorganisms as shown in the figure 3. In this method, a cavity slide which has a circular concavity in the center is used. The periphery of the concavity on the cavity slide is smeared with Vaseline. A drop of liquid microbial culture is placed in the center of the cover glass for liquid culture. If the culture is grown on a solid media, 
it is mixed with a drop of distilled water before placing on the cover glass. The cover glass is inverted over the concavity so that the drop hangs freely and the edge of the cover glass adheres tightly to the Vaseline coated periphery of the concavity. The microorganisms present in the hanging drop are now observed for their type of mobility under the microscope as shown in figure 3 hanging drop method. Let us learn about simple stain. It is quick procedure to determine the presence and to observe the morphology of bacteria in food samples. A simple staining technique involves the application of one stain. This helps in observing the cell shape and arrangement. However, some samples do not stain with simple stains, for example, bacterial spores. To know about differential stain, differential staining involves the usage of two or more stains. Sometimes it also involves heating. Such staining techniques helps in differentiating between different parts of a cell, for example, areas of fat storage. It can also differentiate the various groups of bacteria, for example, between gram positive and gram negative bacteria as shown in figure 4. The reaction of bacteria to gram staining method is a consequence of differences in the chemical structure of the bacterial cell wall and is a key feature in their identification. The basis of gram staining method is the ability of the cell to get stained with crystal violet to retain the color when treated with a differentiating agent usually alcohol although professionals sometimes do use acetone. They are further stained in the contrasting color of a counter stain usually pink or red. Bacteria that retain the violet or purple color are called gram positive. Those that lose the violet or purple color but take the pink or red are called gram negative. Figure 4 shows the gram staining procedure. Dear viewers, please note here that always use a young culture that is 18 to 24 hours old only. Older cultures of gram positive bacteria tend to lose the ability to retain the crystal violet iodine complex and appear to be gram negative. Some bacteria are naturally weakly gram positive. The amount of alcohol treatment, the differential stage must be judged carefully because over treatment washes the crystal violet iodine complex from gram positive bacteria and they will appear to be gram negative. After the direct methods, let us learn about indirect methods. Indirect count is made by growing microorganisms in liquid broth. As microorganisms grow, the broth becomes cloudy or turbid. The turbidity is measured using a device that is turbid meter or calorimeter or spectrophotometer. Aerobic plate count or APC is used as an indicator of bacterial population on a sample. It is also called aerobic colony count, standard plate count or mesophilic count or total plate count. The test is based on an assumption that each cell forms a visible colony when mixed with agar containing the appropriate nutrients. It is not a measure of the entire bacterial population but it is generic test for organisms that grow aerobically at mesophilic temperatures between 25 to 40 degree centigrade. The count is expressed as colony forming unit or CFU per gram or ml. APC does not differentiate the types of bacteria. APC can be used to gauge the sanitary quality, organoleptic acceptability, adherence to good manufacturing practice and to a lesser extent as an indicator of safety. APC may also provide information regarding shelf life or impending organoleptic change in a food. Standard plate count or plate loop count SPC, plate loop count PLC, standard plate count or plate loop count that is SPC or PLC is the measure of the total number of aerobic bacteria in the milk. The most common causes of high SPC could be unhygienic milking equipment, 
poor cooling and poor udder preparations. Mastitic cows can also be responsible for high counts. The regulatory limit for SPC is 1 lakh bacteria per ml of milk. Let's learn about spiral plate count or SPLC. The spiral plate count SPLC method is used for counting microorganisms in milk, food and cosmetics. In this method, a mechanical plater inoculates a rotating agar plate with liquid sample. The sample volume dispensed decrease as the dispensing stylus moves away from the center to the edge of the rotating plate. The microbial concentration is determined by counting the colonies on a part of the petri dish where they are easily countable and dividing this count by the appropriate volume. One inoculation determines microbial densities between 500 and 5 lakh microorganisms per ml. Additional dilutions may be made for suspected high microbial concentrations. Membrane filtrations or MF. Membranes with a pore size that will retain bacteria generally 0.45 microgram but allow water or diluent to pass or used as shown in figure 5. Following the collection of bacteria upon filtering a given volume, the membrane is placed on an agar plate or an absorbent pad saturated with the culture medium of choice and incubated appropriately. Following growth, the colonies are enumerated alternatively, a DMC can be made. In this case, the organisms collected on the membrane are viewed and counted microscopically following the appropriate staining, washing and treatment of the membrane to render it transparent. These methods are specially suited for samples that contain low number of bacteria, the use of fluorescent dyes and epifluorescent microscopes to enumerate bacteria in waters has been employed rather widely since the early 1970s. Cellulose filters were among the earliest use. However, polycarbonate nucleopore filters offer the advantage of retaining all bacteria on the top of the filter. Figure 5 as shows estimation of cell numbers by membrane filtration. Let's learn about most probable number or NPN. The method was introduced by McCarty for in 1915. This is a qualitative method for determination of the presence of coliforms in potable water. The selective medium used is McConkie's medium which contains a bile salt inhibitory for growth of non-intestinal lactose fermenting bacteria. Since this method is statistical in nature, MPN results are generally higher than SPC. Let us learn about dye reduction test. Dye reduction test involves the use of redox dyes like methylene blue to determine the quality of milk. Methylene blue is reduced and loses its color in the presence of actively growing bacteria. The time taken for the reduction of methylene blue is inversely proportional to the number of viable bacteria. The shorter the methylene blue reduction time, higher is the microbial count and poor is the quality of the milk. Special methods for the cultivation of microorganisms. Dear viewers, the artificial culturing of microorganisms requires a supply of necessary nutrients along with the provision of appropriate conditions such as temperature, pH and oxygen concentration. All microorganisms require a good supply of nutrients. Macronutrients like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur and phosphorus are required by all the organisms. These are required for all the biological activities like growth, reproduction, etc. Micronutrients like magnesium, potassium, sodium, calcium and iron in their ionized forms are required in lesser quantities. Micronutrients are all metal ions and frequently serve as cofactors for the enzymes. Cultivation medium for microorganisms. For cultivation of microorganisms, we need to provide nutrients necessary for the 
organisms of interest. There are different ways to classify the media, liquid media. When the required nutrients are provided in the form of a liquid, it is called a broth. The liquids are usually placed in a test tube or a flask. Solid medium. Liquid media that has been solidified by the addition of agar, usually 1.5 percent weight by volume. Agar is a complex polysaccharide obtained from the sea algae. The solid media can be placed in the petri dishes that is agar plates or test tubes with a large surface area or agar slants. Media are classified based on the nutrient as follows. Nutrient media. Nutrient media are specific chemical formulations that contain all the nutrients and minerals that many microorganism needs for normal growth. Defined medium. A defined medium is one whose precise chemical composition is known. Undefined medium. An undefined or complex medium is one whose precise chemical composition are not known. An undefined or complex medium may have a variable composition due to the inclusion of a component such as blood, yeast and mixed extract or tap water. Selective medium. A selective medium is one that favors the growth of particular organism or group of organisms. It often suppresses the growth of other organisms. An enrichment culture uses a selective media component to encourage the growth of an organism present in low numbers. For example, Manitol salt agar is selective for Staphylococci because most other bacteria cannot grow in its high salt environment. Another selective medium is brilliant green agar, a medium that inhibits the gram positive bacteria while permitting gram negative organism such as Salmonella species to grow. Let us learn about differential medium. A differential medium allows colonies of a particular organism to be differentiated from others growing in the same culture. These media provide environments in which different bacteria can be distinguished from one another. For instance, violet red bile agar is used to distinguish coliform bacteria such as Ischirchia coli or E. coli from non-coliform organism. The coliform bacteria appear as bright pink colonies in this media while non coli forms appear a light pink or clear. Let us know about the factors affecting the microbial growth. Microorganisms require favorable physical parameter like temperature, pH, aeration, etc. Temperature. Microorganism is able to grow over a wide range of temperature from freezing to above boiling point. Every microorganism has minimum and maximum growth temperature. Growth is slower at the lower temperature because enzymes work less efficiently and also because lipids tend to harden and there is a loss of membrane fluidity. The optimum temperature is generally closer to the maximum growth temperatures than the minimum as shown in figure 6. Microorganisms can be categorized based on the temperature at which they grow as depicted in figure 7. Mesophils. Mesophils are the microorganisms with optimal growth around 20 to 45 degrees centigrade. Examples Staphylococcus aureus, Salmonella, Listeria, Pseudomonas, E. coli, Pencillium species, Aspergillus species, Mucroap species, Rhizophus species, thermophiles. Those microorganisms which are capable of growth within a range of about 40 to 80 degree centigrade with optima around 50 to 60 degree centigrade, they are adopted to not only surviving but thriving at much higher temperature. Examples are hydrogen baculum, thiomonas, Acid microbium, Humocrola, Thermoscoscus, extreme thermophiles or hyperthermophiles. These are the microorganisms which have optimum value and can tolerate temperature excess to 100 degree centigrade. 
examples are Thermococcus, Barophilus, Thermus aquaticus, Thermococcus etorelli, Psychrophiles. Psychrophiles microorganisms occupy the other extreme of the temperature range. They can grow at 0 degree centigrade with optimal growth occurring at 15 degree centigrade or below. Examples are Erythrobacter species, Psychrobacter species, Halomonas species, Hyphomonas species, Sphingomonas species, Oreobacidium, Pololulans, Foma species, Chirosporium, Psychotrophs. They can also grow at 0 degree centigrade as they have much temperature optima between the range of 20 to 30 degree centigrade. Figure 7 shows the classification of microorganism on the basis of preferred growth temperature. Let us learn about the effect of pH on microorganisms. Microorganisms are strongly influenced by pH of their surrounding. The pH range between minimum and maximum values is greater in fungi than in bacteria. Based on their tolerant and optimum growth, they can be acidophilic, neutrophilic or alkophilic as shown in figure 8. Figure 8 shows the type of microorganisms based on the pH requirement for their growth. Let us know how oxygen affects the microorganism. Earth atmosphere consists oxygen that is 20 percent and most of the life forms are dependent upon it for their survival and growth. Various types of oxygen requirement by microbes is given in figure 9. Aerobes. Microorganisms which require oxygen for growth are known as aerobes. The examples are bacteria alkali genes, pseudomonas, lactobacillus, leucomonastic, micrococcus, bacillus, serratia, macrocensins, flavobacterium, among the yeast, rhodotorula, molds, rhizopus, aspergillus, pencilium, mucor, cladosporium and sporotrichum. Anaerobes. They are able to survive in the absence of oxygen or grow in the absence of oxygen. For example, bacteria, we have alkali genes, Clostridium species, obligate anaerobes. Microorganisms which cannot tolerate oxygen at all requires culturing in special anaerobic chambers. Examples among these are Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium tetany, Clostridium perfrigens, Mycobacterium, Tuberculosis, Pyromonas and Spheromonas. Facultative anaerobes. Microorganisms are able to grow like aerobes in the presence of oxygen but have the added facility of being able to survive when conditions become anaerobic or without oxygen. The examples are Staphylococcus species, we have Listeria species, Saccharomyces services, aerotolerant anaerobes. They are basically the anaerobic microorganisms not inhibited by oxygen which they do not utilize it. Examples are Thiobacillus, Thiococcus, Microaerophiles. They require oxygen but are only able to tolerate low concentration that is 2 to 10 percent only. Examples are Chemphilobacteria species, Helicobacteria, Pylori. Figure 9 shows the effect of oxygen on the growth of various types of microorganism. The effect of osmotic pressure on microorganism. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated one. Equalizing concentrations, the pressure required to make this happen is called the osmotic pressure. Microorganisms able to tolerate sodium chloride concentration of between 0.5 to 3 percent are classified as osmotolerant microbes. Haloduric. They are salt tolerant bacteria able to tolerate concentration 10 times as high but they prefer lower concentration. Halophiles, they are salt loving 
forms are adopted to grow best in conditions of high salinity such as those in Dead Sea. Dear viewers, to conclude on the second part of cultivation of microorganisms, there are a number of methods for enumeration of microorganisms. Every method used in the detection of microbial load has its own advantages and limitations and the applications depends on the type of samples. In addition, it is also very important to know physical parameters required for cultivation and enumeration of microorganisms. As microbial growth depends on parameters like pH, temperature, aeration, etc. Thank you viewers.